The California Faculty Association threatens a strike, demanding a 5% pay increase. Armed gunmen opened fire inside a hotel in Mali, killing over 20. A memorial is held for a Downey police officer shot and killed as he headed home from work. This is Valley View News. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Victor Park. And I'm Jordan Salceda. Thousands of California Faculty Association members marched in Long Beach to the CSU Chancellor's Office. They threatened to strike if a wage agreement is not met. Valley View News reporter Alexi Chibachian has this report. California State University faculty, students, and union members across all 23 CSU campuses protested and marched in front of CSU Chancellor Timothy White's office, demanding a 5% wage increase. The protest comes after a 94% vote was casted by members of the California Faculty Association, authorizing to strike if the union is unable to reach an agreement. The protest followed a board of trustees meeting where they discussed wage compensation. CSU management has offered a 2% salary increase, however faculty say that is not enough. In September, the trustees told ABC7 News that a 2% increase was enough as they are currently managing a funding gap of roughly $70 million. Our salaries have been cut while these folks in this building keep giving themselves raises. California the Assemblywoman Tony Atkins and other state officials are also in support of the wage increase. These are the facts. CSU has more money and CSU will get more money. My colleagues and I know that you are working below 2004 salary levels and that's not right. CFA President Janet Egan says that the hiring of faculty has not kept up with the high enrollment of students and that it has affected students' education. For us to have good schools, we need our teachers. And right now it's being funded into administrative offices and pay raises for them when our teachers are the heart of our schools. If an agreement is not reached, union officials say they will strike as early as January. Faculty say the purpose of the wage increase is to create better living conditions for faculty and better education for students. They are asking for justice and pay equality. If not given their 5% increase, they are forced to go on strike. In Long Beach, Alexis Bashan for Valley View News. France has lost its first attacks on ISIS from the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier. France began bombing ISIS strongholds after the terror attacks on Paris. The deployment of the French aircraft carrier allows the French to double the number of aircraft hitting ISIS. Many of the bombing missions have targeted the Syrian city of Raqqa, which has been under control of the terrorist group. A Downey police officer has been shot and killed. Valley View News reporter Serena Sandoval went to a memorial set by the city's police department. Ricardo Galvez was shot in his car while off duty at this DPD parking spot. His friend Jose Cortez says he will be missed. Because he was a great young man and, you know, we're really going to miss him. You know, I just pray that his parents, or mom and, uh, you know, brother and the sisters can uh, find peace because they're really hurting right now. A memorial was held for the officer and Jonathan Enriquez came to pay his respects. When one of us has a tragic loss, we all come together just like family. And we have um, a lot of brothers and sisters that we've lost too many, and this is just a, one that just needs to stop. It's just very sad for the community. People in Downey say Galvez's death will only bring them closer together. This whole thing is really, really a nightmare for our city. And I, I really believe that this is going to bring everybody so much tighter and closer because we don't let these kind of things happen, not here in Downey. Police say the shooter is a minor and is being charged as an adult. There are two other suspects involved. They have also been arrested. In Downey, Serena Sandoval, Valley View News. Six survivors are still recovering after a terrorist attack on a Mali hotel. Heavily armed gunmen went into the hotel and started firing at the guests and diplomats. 21 people were killed in the attack. A group linked to al-Qaeda took responsibility for the attack. Hotel employees say they heard the men yelling, Allahu Akbar, Arabic, for God is great. Many people were trapped inside the building for hours before the country's security and United Nations forces rushed the building. Two U.S. pilots have been killed in a helicopter crash in South Korea during a routine training mission. The U.S. Army says the AH-64 Apache came down near an American military base. 
South Korean authorities say the chopper may have hit power lines. The identities of these pilots have been withheld until their families are notified. One of the men responsible for the largest mass kidnappings in the U.S. history could be freed on parole. Fred Woods was originally given 27 life sentences without the possibility of parole. He had kidnapped 26 children and their bus driver in 1976. He buried them alive in Chowchilla, California. The bus driver helped some of the children escape to go for help. They had been trapped for 16 hours. Woods is the last kidnapper remaining in prison. Brothers Richard and James Schoenfeld were freed on parole in 2013 and earlier this year. The board refused to release Woods last week, and his next chance at the parole may not come for three years. CNN reports the kidnappers were originally seeking a $5 million ransom. A nonprofit in Northridge is working to keep the children of homeless families in school and not out on the streets. Valley View's reporter Noemi Barajas takes us to that shelter that puts education first. These children are enjoying some free time from their homework, but at the end of the day, they don't have a place to call home. The San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission in Northridge helps homeless children stay in school. One of the mothers at the shelter has been there for a month and says she has not seen her children's grades drop. But I just think um, socially they may have changed and interacting with the other kids and, you know, that may have changed somewhat. Having the stability there helps put the pieces together towards their education, although adjusting to a new environment will take time. The biggest challenges that uh, the adolescent tends, tends to have, uh, there's many of them, but the ones that they tend to have is basically not trusting uh, people. Uh, secondly, there's uh, an issue of uh, where to go, who to trust, who to talk to about their being, uh, you know, homeless. Los Angeles Unified School District estimates that there are three to 5,000 homeless children every day, but it is through shelters like the San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission that help families get stability and help their children enroll in school. Education is one of the things we focus on here. We have five outcomes that we focus on, and one of them is education. Wade says some of the kids have actually raised their grades because of the support they get at the shelter. An LAUSD employee goes once a week to help the children. We have kids who haven't been in school for a few months sometimes, up to six months, and he helps them enroll in school. Or it's kids who just moved into the neighborhood, so he helps them enroll in a local school, make sure they have school uniforms, their books, backpacks, everything that they need for school. Education for homeless children is not out of their reach. With or without a home, and with the right resources, any child can get an education. <laughs> In Northridge, Noemi Barajas, Valley View News. A $4.9 million settlement has been reached in the death of a homeless man in Fullerton. Kelly Thomas's family said that their son was killed by police as they confronted him on the street in July of 2011. They say he died as a result of suffocation and head trauma. The city said Thomas died from a pre-existing heart condition. Two officers were acquitted in a criminal trial. Police in Indiana have arrested three men in connection with the murder of a pastor's wife. Police say one of the three, an 18-year-old man, may have been the one who shot the victim. The shooting occurred in the woman's home while her husband was at the gym. Police say the young man allegedly raped Amanda Blackburn before shooting her. The two other suspects allegedly left the house with the pastor's ATM card to withdraw money. Pastor David Blackburn says the arrest cannot undo the damage done, but he does feel relief. The LAPD has come out with a list of the most dangerous intersections in the San Fernando Valley. Last week, Valley View News reporter Harry Abelson took a look at Los Angeles' most dangerous intersections. This week, Valley View News' Ashton Smith shows us why streets in the valley are causing the same problems. Distracted drivers and busy intersections. These are just some of the reasons why the Balboa Boulevard and Devonshire Street intersection has been listed as one of the valley's most dangerous by the Los Angeles Police Department and some residents are saying they are not surprised. There's been a lot of accidents all the time, and I live really close by, like um, two blocks away, and I'm always hearing the ambulances and stuff, and there's been um, car crashes, and yeah, it's been really crazy lately. The LAPD was unavailable for comment, but in a press release on the LAPD website, they say there will be a task force at these intersections with the goal of reducing the number of traffic collisions and fatalities in these areas. The intersection behind me is Balboa and Devonshire, and the LAPD has listed it as one of their most dangerous intersections. Now over here to the left, I have Valley Academy High School, 
And it's only one block away from the intersection, and this is concerning many parents and students. I'm always telling my kids that you need to, even though you look and see that the light is green and you have the right of way or the hand is up and you have the right of way, you need to pay attention to everything that's going on around you. And the parents, when they're in a hurry dropping their kids off and picking their kids up, they drive crazy. Students in the surrounding area have to take extra precaution to stay safe when drivers aren't paying attention. A lot of kids like are close to getting hit because um, no one really pays attention to when they're driving and they just they're in a rush to get to places and they don't really like care about people who are walking and pedestrians. So if you find yourself at one of these intersections, be alert and pay attention. In the San Fernando Valley, Ashton Smith, Valley View News. The effects of El Nino are expected to vary widely around the world. That's what one researcher says. The University of Colorado's Michael Glantz says a severe lack of rain will likely continue in Ethiopia. Devastating floods and torrential rains are predicted for Peru. Californians are hoping for a rainfall well above normal to help ease a drought that's gone on for several years. El Nino occurs when water in the eastern Pacific Ocean becomes unusually warm. It has happened periodically for thousands of years, but scientists have only recently studied its effects on global weather. Well, some can argue that taxis are a thing of the past. Mobile apps like Uber and Lyft have become successful but are not always regulated in airports. Valley View News reporter Amy Martinez tells us how the Burbank Airport is working on new regulations. Rideshare companies like Uber and Lyft have become popular because they are convenient and affordable. Sorry. However, some airports across the U.S., including LAX, have prohibited these companies from picking up passengers. Airport officials say it slows down traffic and creates a safety problem for people. At Bob Hope Airport in Burbank, the complication has gotten out of hand. What's currently happening is they're pulling into the parking structure, but they're obstructing traffic. They're not pulling into a spot, they're pulling over, they're, they're stopping in the middle of the drive through and it's creating problems. The airport authority has introduced a three-year contract which states that drivers must obey all regulations in order to continue their services in the airports. This includes paying the $3 fee to park in the structure. Airport officials say rideshare companies will have these parking spots behind me on reserve to pick up passengers. They say it will free up some space in the loading area and avoid any accidents. But drivers like Art say they disagree. I think for the most part, we're more careful and better drivers than a lot of the people that park or double park or stop in the middle of the street and let people off. Bergdorf says in addition to safety hazards, the airport is losing out on parking revenue, one of its largest revenue generators. The new agreement will regulate and equalize the way transportation services operate and will also help the airport's budget. In Burbank, Amy Martinez, Valley View News. A protester is recovering after being beaten up at a Donald Trump speech in Alabama. Mercutio Southall Jr. was attacked for speaking out and interrupting the event. Attendees say Southall was yelling out the phrase, Black Lives Matter. A man threw Southall to the floor while a woman repeatedly kicked him. Trump's spokesperson says they do not condone this violence. However, Trump says the protester was loud and obnoxious and probably should have been roughed up. When we come back, find out who the Dodgers have hired as their new manager. And Valley View News reporter Jordan Salceda gives us an insight on concussions in high school football players. And here's Jacqueline Serrano with the latest on sports. So there was a big fight in Las Vegas, huh? That's right, Victor. But first, former Dodger player Dave Roberts will be the new manager of the team next year. USA Today says that Roberts will get a three-year contract with a four-year option. Roberts was the Padres bench coach the past two seasons. He also managed one game for the Padres in 2015, filling in after Bud Black was fired. The Padres lost 9-1. Roberts played for the Dodgers from 2002 to 2004. He played in the majors for 10 years and was a career 266 hitter with 243 steals and played in the postseason four times. Concussions continue to be a major health concern in football, and that includes high school teams. Valley View's Jordan Salcedo went to Valencia to see what one high school program is doing about it. Football is one of America's most popular contact sports, but it also has the highest rate of concussions amongst its players. 
The Valencia High Vikings have had approximately eight concussions this season alone, according to their sports medicine program. The NFL and NCAA are not the only ones getting the attention because the problem is just as big at the high school level. It's an issue that it's uh, very important. You know, um, can you stop them? Uh, no, I don't think you can really stop them. You know, it's gonna, there's gonna be, it's football's a contact sport. The Sports Concussion Institute says returning to play before fully recovering increases the chance for multiple concussions. It can lead to additional neurological damage and long-term effects on the brain. More than one million players a year potentially risk brain-damaging concussions. Last year, five players died. All right, here we go. Run it, guys. Since the school year has started, six players have also died from football-related injuries across the United States. Although football players are covered from head to toe with pads and helmets, these preventative measures only reduce the chance of injury. They do not prevent concussions. Symptoms of a concussion affect the student athlete, making seemingly easy tasks such as concentrating difficult. Memory loss, um, continuous headaches, blurred vision that they would continue to have. They'd have a hard time uh, reading in class. Valencia High's sports medicine program monitors athletes to make sure they're healthy before returning to play. With us to return back would be at least seven days for them to return back or longer. We've had athletes that have been out for a month um, because of their situation. It's a coach's call to sit on an athlete if an athletic trainer or doctor isn't present. We'll have some ourselves look at them and if we feel it's, it's necessary we'll have sports med program look at them and then I feel that we have the parents involved also so they'll have to know if, if something's going on with the, with the student athlete. The motto for coaches, when in doubt, sit them out. In Valencia, Jordan Salceda, Valley View News. The Golden State Warriors have started their season with 15 wins in a row. This ties an NBA record with the 93-94 Rockets and the 48-49 Capitals for best season start. The Warriors tied the record when they beat the Denver Nuggets 118-105. Stephen Curry had a big third quarter, scoring 10 out of his 19 points. He also had 7 assists, 4 rebounds and 3 steals in 27 minutes. The Warriors will now be looking to set another NBA record for most consecutive wins in a season. The record currently belongs to the 71-72 Lakers. Mexico's Saul Canelo Alvarez has defeated Puerto Rico's Miguel Cotto to claim the middleweight title. Alvarez won by a unanimous decision at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Alvarez was more aggressive than usual and dominated most of the rounds with heavy rights and uppercuts. Cotto tried to outbox the younger Alvarez, but was often on the short end of exchanges. Alvarez won 8 of the 12 rounds after an impressive victory. Alvarez now appears set to return on May 7th, taking over the annual Cinco de Mayo fight. The traditional Hawaiian hula is becoming therapeutic for some seniors in La Cañada, Flint Ridge. They're putting on their hula skirts and getting a workout at the same time. Valley View News reporter Sarah Vong takes us there. 57-year-old Michelle DeCastro is combining dancing to her exercise routine. Hula dancing, that is. For the past 10 years, she was having trouble lifting her shoulders. My body was seizing up. I was, everything hurt. I needed to get some exercise. She's never hula danced before, and now, two years later, she can lift her arm without any problems. Experts say a 30-minute dance class can burn between 130 to 250 calories. The oldest woman in this class is 87 years old, and hula instructor Barbara Dempsey says these women are more physically fit than they've been before. Now they're retaining their numbers, they go home and practice, which means they're exercising outside of class, plus as you get older you just lose your sexy, but when you start doing the hula these women are feeling sexy and they're feeling good about themselves, they're coming into class with lipstick on and feeling good, looking good. So right now we're just Dempsey says hula dancing has saved her after she had knee surgery. These seniors also perform each lesson to the public, so they're working out and training their brains to remember the moves. And for DeCastro, she says she's seen improvements. I have uh, definitely limbered up and, you know, I could touch the ground and I have a lot more energy. Dempsey says the goal is to feel good physically and share the aloha love with others. In La Canada, Flint Ridge, I'm Sarah Vong, Valley View News. That's all we have for sports. That looks like a fun way to work out. That's right. Thanks a lot, Jacqueline. 
When we come back, we will tell you who won the biggest awards of the night at the American Music Awards. The latest Hunger Game movie disappoints at the box office. And we will give you a scoop on Sofia Vergara's wedding. Now let's send it over to Maria Leal for the latest in entertainment. Some of the biggest names in music took home awards. Maria? That's right, Jordan. Some of the most famous stars showed up at the biggest fan-voted award show. Jennifer Lopez hosted the American Music Awards and started the show with a dance number featuring the most popular songs of the year. The Weeknd took home favorite So R&B album. Nicki Minaj won favorite rap hip-hop album tying Eminem's record for most AMAs in the category. The show had many performances, but the most touching one of the night was from Celine Dion, who sang a tribute to victims of the Paris attacks. The Boys of One Direction took home the biggest award of the night, Artist of the Year. Some CSUN students have found a way to spread holiday cheer to the elderly. Juanique Elliott has a story from a Chatsworth retirement home. The people who live at Brookdale Retirement Home chime into the Christmas spirit. A group of CSUN students took time out of their busy schedules to come and sing to the elderly. Huguette Stevens says she is very grateful. Having those young people coming, visiting old people like us is a blessing. I just love every minute of it. Their singing were precious and gracious for us. I, we cannot explain. We hear suffering and... <laughs> and having young people coming to us. What do you think? We just love them. To pay respect to the many veterans in the room, the students sang the Star Spangled Banner. CSUN student Nakia Ward says she understands how engaging with the seniors is beneficial. A lot of times when people enter their last, you know, their more advanced stage of life, they don't have a lot of visitors and things of that nature. And me, really, I just wanted to remember that, you know, even though it's not something that we see a lot, I personally, you know, you got to come and you still have to remember that these are still human beings and you want to just come and engage with them and talk with them and see what kind of life they live. Although the singers are gone, it doesn't stop the seniors from being excited about the holidays. Behind me here, they're having a nice holiday dinner. In Chatsworth, Juanique Elliott, Valley View News. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 topped the box office on its opening weekend. The final movie of the series earned just over $100 million just in the U.S. That makes it the fifth highest grossing movie of the year. That's good, but the earlier Hunger Games movies did better. The James Bond thriller Spectre came in second and Charlie Brown's The Peanuts movie rounded out the top three. The Modern Family star and Magic Mike actor have tied the knot after being engaged for a year. Sofia Vergara and Joe Manganiello were married at the Breakers Resort in Palm Beach, Florida. Other stars like Channing Tatum and Reese Witherspoon were there to help celebrate the wedding. The newlyweds posted many photos on their social media accounts. Adele is back with her new album, 25, her first in four years. The British singer's much-anticipated album has sold 2.3 million copies since its release in the United States alone. NSYNC's No Strings Attached album is the only other release to sell more than 2 million during its first week. The boy band holds the record for first week sales at 2.4 million. The only other artist to come close to the record was Taylor Swift with her 1989 album which sold 1.3 million its first week. If you didn't buy the album, don't expect to hear it. Adele is not allowing streaming services like Apple Music and Spotify to stream 25. Wow, what a major comeback for Adele. That's it for entertainment. Thanks for watching Valley View News. I'm Jordan Salceda. And I'm Victor Park. Have a great day.